what's up everybody and today we are reacting to oversimplified world war one you guys know how much i love this channel i think it's fantastic not only is it hilarious but it's also really educational i'll leave a link down below to the original video go over there give it a like and all that good stuff um we did quite a bit of oversimplified last month um i'm gonna do world war one and then i'm probably gonna move away from oversimplified for a while and uh concentrate on some other stuff we've got some vanguard coming out in the next few days right uh call of duty vanguard so we'll be playing that we've got battlefield 2042 in a couple weeks we've got halo infinite a couple weeks after that holy cow we have got some things to cover um so it's gonna be a ton of fun before we get started though members you're fantastic it's been fantastic getting to know you guys in the private discord if you want to be part of the private discord guardsmen and officers tiers in the members get access to that and we get to play some games together and we're gonna be playing some games together very soon with all these fantastic ones coming out so uh get hyped it's gonna be a ton of fun but for now let's shut up let's pop this up let's have a good old cheeky watch shall we a little bit shorter than usual the world of 1914 a time of modern technology culture and fashion <laughs> the height of civilization. Le wait, 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 wait. Technology, culture, wait. And fashion. Truly. That literally looks like it's his legs. <laughs> Doesn't it? That's hilarious. The height of civilization. Let's have a war. Oh, Everyone geez. Everyone knew a big war was coming. France wanted some stuff back that Germany had taken from it. Germany wanted to take more of everyone's stuff, and they were building a big sexy navy that was making the British uncomfortable. <laughs> These two empires thought they were really cool, but lots of different people who lived there didn't think it was so cool. Oh, geez. Some of them had even been declaring independence with help from Russia. Everyone was talking about each other behind each other's backs, throwing the fact that military technology had come a long way since the last major war. Interesting. Suddenly, everyone was pretty eager to beat each other up. In this area of Austria-Hungary lived some Serbs and Bosnians who hated living in Austria-Hungary. So the Austro-Hungarian <laughs> Archduke Franz Ferdinand goes there for a nice drive in an open-top car with his car's route published in advance. And that went just about as well as you'd expect. Some assassins Yikes. were waiting for him along the way and threw bombs at his car. Wow. And blew up some officers behind him instead. So the Archduke goes into hiding, leaves Sarajevo, and the whole war never happens. Except no, the Archduke doesn't leave, but instead goes back out in the open top car to visit the injured officers in hospital. The driver takes a wrong turn and by sheer coincidence gets stuck beside one of the failed assassins. Wow. He shoots him. Austria Wow, what are the chances? Holy cow. Wonder if, if if that if he didn't go down that wrong turn, I wonder if World War One would have even happened. I'm pissed about all this, and they think the Serbian government had something to do with it, which they might have. Mm. So they go to their ally Germany and say, "Hey Germany, we're gonna declare war on Serbia," and Germany is all for that. So Austria-Hungary send a big list of impossible demands to Serbia, and when Serbia refuses, they declare war. Wow. Austria-Hungary and Germany are friends, and Serbia is protected by Russia, who's friends with France, so they all declare war on each other. Multiple wow that escalated quickly didn't it holy cow france and britain also have a kind of alliance so when france says hey britain you got my back britain is like maybe <laughs> and then they decide to stay out of it which is great oh, for germany because germany has a plan they know that russia is so big and clumsy that it will take them a while to get ready for war so with this guy in charge germany will send all its troops in that was a pointy hat wasn't it the france at lightning speed while russia's getting ready Defeat France, then move all the troops to Russia and defeat Russia, and then we all speak German and eat Pfeffer Potast every day. Just Interesting. One France has loads of forts and defenses along its German border, and Germany can't waste any time fighting them, so Germany decides to go around them through Belgium. Okay. Damn. Belgium is neutral, but Germany wants to march 750,000 troops through it to get around France's defenses. 750,000 troops! Holy cow! Holy cow, think about that for a second. Oh, by the way, we just want to walk through your land. 750,000 of us. Just me, me, me and my mates. No big deal. <laughs> they're hoping Belgium will just kind of sit down and shut up, but they don't. They fight back. Good. And they're pretty good too, so they slow the Germans down. What's worse is that Britain shows up, and they're pretty pissed that Germany's invading neutral countries. So now Britain declares war in Germany. Ooh. So Germany push on through Belgium and commit some atrocities along the way. Uh, yep. They also wear spikes and sometimes skulls on the uniform. So if you're trying to not look like the bad guys, good job. The Allies <laughs> have a propaganda extravaganza, and this starts having an influence around the world. Wow. In America, 
The U.S. President Woodrow Wilson sees himself as a bit of a Jesus figure who <laughs> spends most of the war trying to get everyone to just hug it out. But there's also a large population of ethnic Germans living in the United States. Interesting. And when the war first broke out, they were like, yay, Germany. But now that they're committing atrocities in Belgium, they're less enthusiastic. Yeah. Let's play Spot the French Soldier. <laughs> Did you see him? Easy, right? He's wearing a bright blue uniform with red trousers. <laughs> and do you know who else spotted him easily too? The Germans. The Germans. So uh. the French were slowly marching in columns through the countryside, the Germans easily tore them to shreds with their giant guns. All the nations involved in this war went in with an old school war mentality. Yep. Well, this is where it kind of adapted and changed, in it, for the first time. This is where things really took a turn. When it, we've seen the videos, haven't we, of like the evolution of, of uh, military uniform for both. Uh, we did the Germans one, and we did the British. Or was it the American and the British? I can't remember. Anyway, the the drastic change at World War One was crazy. It was crazy, and it's because of this, obviously. And all of them had to update their uniforms and tactics a lot during the Great War. Yeah. Because yeah. this war was going to be like nothing anyone had ever seen before. Russia's ready for war, and way earlier than expected. Yeah. Hey, Austria Hungary, can you get on top of that? Oh, yeah, sure, we've got this. Nope. <laughs> Germany has to send some troops back to the east to defend against the Russians. The chief of staff of the Austro Hungarian army is this guy, and although he is handsome, he turns out not to be the best military strategist. <laughs> Austria Hungary constantly ignores Germany's advice and then comes running back to Germany whenever they get in trouble. Oh, Austria-Hungary even gets its ass kicked by tiny Serbia, who repels all their invasion attempts at the start of the war. It's nice. better news for Germany in the north, though, where they almost completely wipe out the Russian second army. Back on the western front, the Germans continue advancing and are in sight of Paris. At this yep. point, anyone would be forgiven for thinking the Germans were going to get that quick victory after all. But then things start to go wrong. The French commander-in-chief knew something had to be done, and he ordered his armies to stop retreating. In the resulting battle, a gap opened up in the German lines. If a gap opens up, the enemy can use it to flank you from the yep. side and behind, so the German armies have to retreat. The Allies launch a counterattack, so the Germans dig into defensive positions. Yep. The Allies do the same. Then both sides move north, trying to outflank each other along the way. When they reach the sea, they're in a stalemate with trench systems running the whole wow. coast to Switzerland. The beginning of trench warfare on the Western Front. Here's how trench warfare works. It sucked, I'm sure. From what I've seen of trench warfare, it was absolutely horrific. We had to we had to do some trench stuff in Royal Marine training, actually. Um, both with trenches and uh, gas training. Horrific. Absolutely horrific. Two opposing lines of trenches with no man's land in between. One side would pummel the other with hundreds of thousands of artillery shells, sometimes yep. for days at a time. This had a huge psychological effect on the soldiers, leaving many shell shocked. Yep. Then, the attacking troops would leave their trenches and rush across no man's land, a muddy wet mass of shell craters and barbed wire. The defending trench would unleash machine gun fire on the attackers, Ugh. inflicting thousands of casualties. The attackers would send wave after wave until either they gave up or the opposing trench was finally overrun. Wow. Months of fighting and the deaths of thousands in order to gain a few meters or kilometers of land. Living in the trenches was hard work too. Corpses, mud that could swallow you whole, pools of poisonous water, trench rats, foot. disease, the smell. It's insane that millions of soldiers put up with these conditions and commanders ordered them to do so for years. Yep. Part two, show video. Short video. I mean, we know, like, there's, there's bits that I obviously know from from my, you know, teaching at school and, and from being in the Royal Marines. Um, short video, though. Part two is seven minutes, 41 minutes, 41 seconds long. Let me know in the comments if you want me to react to that in the near future. I will certainly do that. If not, I will do it in my own time. No big deal. Um, but it's a ton of fun, and I think it's fantastic to learn these things, and it's important to learn these things, I think. A lot of people don't realize that, but I really do think it, it is. Um, so yeah, if you want me to react to part two, let me know by liking this video and commenting down below. There will also be a link down below to the original video. Please go over there, give it a like, a subscribe and all that good stuff. It's definitely worth it. Uh, members, you're fantastic. You're amazing. I love you. I couldn't do this without you. It's been fantastic getting to know you guys in the private Discord. It truly has. I'm really excited to play some games with you in the near future with Battlefield and Call of Duty and Halo, but mostly Halo, because I'm really excited for Halo. <laughs> Links down below to all my socials, including the two different YouTube channels, Original Human Geek and Original Adventures. Check them both out. And I think that's it. Other than that, I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.